morning, President Alan Marine. Good morning. It's so nice to have you on this Leaders Academy, a website which has been created for lions all over the world to share. We would like you to share how you have made a difference in disaster relief operations, getting the world of lions to know what it is to be ready whenever a disaster strikes. And of course, you have been involved very closely with the 9-11 tragedy and how you feel that made a difference to your perspective as a lion member. Well, good morning and thank you for this opportunity, Sangeeta. We uh, it, uh, to make, to make a difference in our lion's life, it made a difference in our personal life, uh, but to the way it first started on uh, September 11th was actually working in the police department and uh, realizing that the towers were hit and receiving assignments after that time, uh, realizing it wasn't also a, 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 an accident. Uh, going out, doing our job in law enforcement as a police detective and uh, preparing for the next shooter drop, but after we got over that initial reaction of realizing we didn't lose any personal friends or family members, uh, which we had quite a few, then coming back and just trying to assimilate what had happened that day and not knowing what to do next, just sort of not feeling sorry, but uh, just being bewildered. It actually took a uh, past district governor from New York uh, City area that called me and he said, Al, you're the past international director from this area, you're the leader here, you have to do something. And uh, it wasn't, wasn't until then that I realized that we have to do something. And we held a meeting in the basement of our house with the, the leaders in the area that we know we could trust on that was going to get the job done we needed to get done. We didn't know what the job was yet, but we had a meeting and the Marine was there in uh, the basement and a couple of days after and immediately we just decided we don't care about LCIF, we don't care about anybody else. We know personally that we have to do something ourselves and a lot of us took our own checkbooks out and we started a fund to do things. But there was something that was very important though, there was a fellow by the name of Ken Curtin from FEMA, a government agency, federal agency, and he met with the council and we had an emergency meeting, John Wargo, past council chairman John Wargo was the uh, council chairman at the time and he called an emergency meeting of the council and Ken Curtin from FEMA, a wonderful man, still working with FEMA, he came and met with the council and he says, a lot of people are going to be there the first six months. They're going to spend a lot of money. They're going to be gone in six months. Don't spend your money right away and be there for when everybody else is gone. And it turned out he was exactly right. And he also said partner up with somebody else because you, know, you can't do it alone. And we did. But what they more importantly needed, when uh, I realized that right away when a fireman or policeman came in at the beginning of their shift, they just needed to look at somebody and they needed to talk to somebody. And it was important for us to be there, to be those pers uh, people that were going to do that. And at the end of their shift, when they came in working on the pile and seeing some of the horrific things that they did, they just needed to look into somebody's eyes and somebody to look back at them and smile or give them a hug and just say, you know, we, you know, we really appreciate what you're doing. You know, we're here for you. And uh, that was very meaningful. It's not just money. It's not just LCIF, it's doing hands-on things. So we had a committee set up and we decided what we were going to do. If it was heating oil that they needed for, to get them through the winter months. You know, we just, we just bridged the gap for them until they got their, back on their feet. Uh, but during these uh, retreats that we had, the last one we had out in uh, Shelter Island, uh, just you know, on Long Island, uh, we had young grandchildren come in. Their grandpa wasn't there anymore, grandma wasn't there. And we had organizations that had the expertise to come in, and they used music therapy. They, uh, they used the drums to all the kids to start playing together and singing together and dancing together. And we were out there for the weekend. It was really magical. So I know I'm rambling on a little bit, but I guess I'm saying that you have to find your niche. You have to, uh, first, the personal, the personal uh, shock that you have, you have to get over it. Then you have to start thinking that and understanding that you're a member of the world's greatest service organization in the world, the largest service organization. And since 9-11, we've really gotten good at disaster relief. You asked me a question in the beginning about how we prepared, but it's, it's changed my life. I, I'm never going to be the same after 9-11. And I never take anything for granted anymore. And I still get a little emotional about it. But, uh, but it changes you as a person, makes you a better person, and it also will give our lions the hands-on 
wherewithal to go out and do something and to make a transformation. Like I, I, I've been transformed to some degree, uh, you know, for personal reasons, for lionistic reasons, and family reasons, and uh, it's made me a better person. But it's, it's tempered me quite a bit. I, uh, my personality's changed. I know that. So. Uh, at the time of 9-11, Al was uh, still working in the police department, and I was at my same hospital that I am now, working as an anesthesiologist. So my initial involvement was actually as a physician, not as a liar. So the day that those planes hit the, the towers, our hospital is close enough to New York City that we expected to get the casualties to our hospital. So all elective cases were stopped and our ORs were set up for emergency services. So at that time, I was participating, but as a physician, on duty. Unfortunately, the, there were no victims that came to the hospital. There were so few who survived the tragedy. That being said, groups of doctors from my hospital then subsequently went down to Ground Zero to offer assistance. 9-11 was on Tuesday. By Friday, I had that opportunity to go down to Ground Zero. And I went down with a group of nurses and technicians from my hospital, and we were transported by the volunteer fire department. And when I got down to Ground Zero, right at the pile, as they call it, I never expected to be that close. But I had the opportunity. And they had a triage center, and they toured us through the triage center and they said if there were any victims that they would be brought here and that's where we would provide our services. But until a victim was brought in, then we would provide necessary services to the rescue workers. Eye, eye care, and they were having asthma attacks. But the bottom line was there were no survivors. There were no survivors. And so we were there to provide medical services and we wound up doing what was necessary, which in my case wound up putting wheelbarrows together wheelbarrows so that they can carry away the debris over the next several days. As a physician, I never expected to go down to Grand Zero, and that was the service I was providing. But when I was down there, I, I was overwhelmed. I was overwhelmed by the enormity of the entire situation and thought, well, what, am, what am I doing here? Well, I'm at a place. I'm at a place. I was in the Air Force. I had medical training and triage. I was a physician working every day in an operating room. And still, I was overwhelmed with the tragedy, as were, I think, many of the rescue workers, the firemen, the police officers. You could never have imagined this. That being said, I felt very rewarded that I had the opportunity to go down and do something, whatever it was. And I think that's how the lions feel. Everybody wanted to do something. They just didn't know what to do. And with this program that Al just talked about, the ALERT program, that subsequently became known as the ALERT program, but the organization of the local lions, the local lions were able to do hands-on service. They were able to go and get the masks. They were able to move the supplies from one place to the other. Everybody wanted to do something. One of our early trips was up to Canada, and they wanted us to speak about our experience. And so we shared our experiences. Well, out of that came a group of women who made a quilt. And they sent that quilt to us, and they wanted to donate it to raise funds to help the victims in whatever way. A simple thing that the Lions could do. So we raised money, and we donated that at our first blood drive in honor of 9-11. Uh, so everybody wanted to do something. And participation in these um, specialty camps Again, very personally gave Alan and myself the opportunity to share firsthand with victims of 9-11. So I went down as a physician, but I have been, many, uh, been rewarded as a lion because out of this came the opportunity for lions to participate, maybe not as first responders, but as Al says, as second responders, or to support the first responders by providing the meals or the tools or the emotional support. So as a lion, we need to be prepared. We need to be on that volunteer list that if the disaster were ever to occur, sure, you can count on me, call me up, whatever you need. And if you have that preparedness, then when the disaster comes, though still a tragedy, at least you can uh, mobilize our troops, our lions, much more readily to help those in need. Thank you. Thank you very much for sharing that. And I'm sure we will all work towards this our districts, and let's see, that would be great, that would be great.
Thank you. Thank you.